morning. Welcome to worship this morning with Central Baptist in Crandall, Texas. We're going to sing some songs to our God today. I want you to join us as, uh, as, we, as we lead those today. So let's sing together. Here we go. Oh, I raise a hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a hallelujah louder than my unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Oh, I'm gonna raise a hallelujah with everything inside of me. I'm gonna raise a hallelujah. I will watch the darkness flee. I raise a hallelujah in the middle of the mystery. I raise a hallelujah. Fear you lost your hold on me. Oh, I'm gonna sing in the middle of a storm. Sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing a little louder. I'm gonna sing a little louder. Well, I'm gonna sing a little louder in the presence of my enemies. Sing a little louder. Heaven comes to fight for me. Sing a little louder. My weapon is a melody, sing a little louder, it's louder than my unbelief, I'll sing a little louder, I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm, louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar, up from the ashes, hope will
Good morning and welcome to online worship with Central Baptist Church. We're so glad that you've joined us uh, today for this online service and we're grateful that we have the internet that makes it possible for us to worship together online. If you're new with us today, we hope you'll indicate that by typing I'm new in the comment box below. That will give us the opportunity to welcome you to our online congregation. Our folks have been so good to give during the pandemic and we're thankful for that. If you would like to give to the church, just remember that you can give over the church app. You can give through the church website. You can mail your gift to the church, or of course you can uh, bring your offering by the church office. However you give, just remember that our giving to the Lord is an important part of our worship. Now let's pause for prayer and dedicate this service to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the opportunity that we have to worship together online. Lord, we just pray that the music and the prayers, the Bible reading, the preached sermon will all serve to honor and glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in His name that we pray. Amen. All who are thirsty, all who are weak, Come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy, as the deep cries out to deep. We sing, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Sing with me. All who are thirsty, all who are weak, Come to the fountain, dip your heart in the stream of life, let the pain and the sorrow be washed away in the waves of His mercy, as the deep cries out to deep. that again. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow no other 
fount I know nothing but the blood of Jesus and all who are thirsty all who are weak come to the fountain Dip your heart in the stream of life. When I survey the morning. I'm glad to be with you this morning. I'm with you uh, because uh, Brother Charlie and his family are in quarantine. Uh, several days ago, Brother Charlie's grandson, Caden, tested positive for COVID-19. So Brother Charlie and his family are in quarantine at this time. I hope you'll pray for them uh, that uh, no one else in the family uh, contracts uh, this dreaded disease. Let's pray now and ask God to Bless us as we study his holy word this morning. Father, we just give you thanks that we have the opportunity to study your holy word today. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will be our teacher and show us the things that we need to learn. Impart these sacred spiritual truths to our minds and to our hearts. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, the title of our message this morning is The Glorious Cross. And we find our sermon text in John chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. John chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. It goes like this. Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have called me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory with which I I had with you before the world was. Symbols are important to us, aren't they? Uh, for example, your wedding ring is a symbol of your love and dedication to your husband or wife. Of course, the American flag 
is the symbol of our country and we revere the flag. Uh, you're probably like me, when someone disrespects the American flag, I get upset. Now, some would say, well, you know, the flag is just a symbol. What, what is such a big deal anyway? Well, we would say, well, it's true, the flag is just a symbol. But when we think about the American flag, we revere it, we respect it because uh, it reflects the the dedication and the courage of our founding fathers. The American flag reflects the Declaration of Independence and our, our Constitution. Uh, the American flag represents the sacrifice that our uh, military veterans have made through, through the centuries to keep our country uh, free and at liberty. And so, we revere the flag because it is a precious symbol. Uh, it symbolizes uh, everything that is good about the United States of America. In the same way, the cross is a symbol of God's love for the world and Christ's great sacrifice for us. And it's amazing how Jesus Christ changed the symbolism of the cross. In the Roman Empire, the cross symbolized crime and punishment. The Romans used the cross to execute criminals. But in fact, the crucifixion was such a cruel and agonizing death that a Roman citizen could not be crucified. Uh, those who were not Roman citizens could be crucified, and they often were. But the cross was not a noble symbol in the Roman Empire. Rather, it represented capital punishment. When Jesus told his disciples, take up your cross and follow me, many of them stopped following him. They left Jesus entirely because when Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me, that was frightening to them. That disturbed them deeply. And so they no longer followed after Jesus. So Jesus transformed the, the ugly, cruel cross into a symbol of God's love and mercy and grace. Truly, Jesus made the cross glorious. And this morning, we're going to talk about how Jesus made the cross glorious in several different ways. First of all, the cross became glorious because Jesus' death, Jesus' death on the cross was majestic. John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15 says this, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in Him. Now, Jesus meant the Son of Man... He, Jesus, had to be lifted up on the cross of Calvary. It was through his death on the cross that Jesus provided our salvation. And in fact, Jesus talked about that here in verse 15 when he said, Everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. And the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross truly provides our salvation. Jesus was lifted up on the cross to show God's love and grace. And we too must lift him up. Our principal task here at the Central Baptist Church is to lift up the Lord Jesus. Now, if you think about our sanctuary, our auditorium here at Central Baptist Church, you'll recall that there is a cross, a large lighted cross in our baptistry. And truly, that cross looms over our auditorium. It overshadows all that we do here in our church. And that's as it should be. The cross should dominate. The cross should be our theme. And everyone in the community, everyone in eastern Kaufman County should know that Central Baptist Church is a church that lifts up the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a church that exalts the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a church that points people to the cross of Christ 
and helps them understand that by his death on the cross, Jesus Christ paid the sin debt for all people. We must, we must lift up the Lord Jesus Christ and we must preach the cross. Secondly, the, the cross became glorious because on the cross, Jesus finished his work of salvation. John chapter 19, verse 30 says this, When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus meant I have completed my task. My task of saving work is finished. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the sin debt for all of our sins. In other words, all of us deserve punishment. We deserve death because of our sins and our sinful nature. But Jesus took our sin upon himself and he suffered and died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. But as Jesus died, he was able to exclaim, it is finished. His work of salvation was complete. Jesus had served as our substitute on the cross and his substitutionary death was a reality. I love the paintings of Jesus by the noted painter Holman Hunt. In Holman's Hunt painting, Jesus is working in the carpenter shop there in Nazareth and he straightens up to stretch his back and outstretches his arms and the sun coming through the window makes the shadow of the cross on the wall behind. Truly, Jesus was born to die. Jesus came to this earth to die to pay the penalty for our sins. Jesus' work of redemption is truly marvelous, and it was God's plan from the very beginning. Listen to the words from Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. All inhabitants of the earth will worship the beast, all those whose names have not been written in the Lamb's book of life, the Lamb who was slain from the creation of the world. So what this verse is telling us is that God had planned for Jesus to die on the cross from before the world was ever created. So the death of Jesus on the cross was, was not a coincidence. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't happens chance. No, Jesus' death on the cross was part of God's eternal plan for our salvation. And when Jesus said, it is finished, Jesus was saying, I have finished my work of redemption and I have finished, I have completed God's plan for the salvation of the people on the earth. Third, we understand that the cross is glorious because Jesus was perfectly obedient. Think how Jesus prayed there in the Garden of Gethsemane. On the night before his crucifixion, Jesus took his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And it says this, Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup pass from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. In other words, Jesus was saying, if this cup of suffering can be taken away from me, let it be so. But God, my Father, not my will, but your will be done. And that's the way we should, we should all pray. That's the way we should all do. That should be the attitude that we all manifest. Jesus obeyed his Father in everything. And indeed, the Apostle Paul marveled 
at Jesus' obedience and he held Jesus up to us as an example. This is what Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 2, verse 8. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So by his death on the cross, Jesus demonstrated his complete obedience to the Father. Jesus submitted to the Father in all things. He prayed, not my will, but your will be done. And Jesus did the Father's will even to the point of dying on the cross to pay for our sins. And this is a great example for us. Every day we should pray, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Our purpose as Christians is not to do what we like or to do what we please, but rather our purpose as Christians is to do what God pleases. Our will, our preferences are not important. What is important is the will of Almighty God. Fourth lesson that we learn is that the cross is glorious because it provides eternal life. The cross provides eternal life. You know, John chapter 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. So, it's through Christ's death on the cross that we can have eternal life. How so? Well, because Jesus died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. God put upon him the penalty, the punishment for our sins. As, as the book of Isaiah says, and with his stripes, we are healed and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity, the sin of us all. And so when we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay our sin debt, the penalty for our sins, and when we believe that Jesus rose again from the grave, when we affirm that, when we believe that, when we trust in Jesus for our salvation, then we receive eternal life through Jesus Christ. John 3.16 for God so loved the world. R.G. Lee, the famous Baptist preacher, said that in John 3.16, we see the greatest love. For God so loved the world. How much? So much that He gave His only begotten Son. And that's the greatest gift. So in John 3.16, we see the greatest love, we see the greatest gift, the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we see the greatest promise, so that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. So at the end of the verse, we have God's promise to us that if we believe, that if we trust in Jesus Christ, we will not perish, but rather we will have everlasting life, eternal life life. The cross is glorious because it provides eternal life. Hundreds of years ago, Portuguese missionaries built a great cathedral on the hill above the harbor of Macau, China. A terrific typhoon destroyed that large cathedral and the only part of the cathedral left standing after the typhoon was the massive front wall, which was topped by a huge bronze cross. When John Bowring saw that cross in 1825, he wrote these words, In the cross of Christ I glory, towering over the wrecks of time, all the light of sacred story gathers round its head sublime. Indeed, the cross should tower 
over our church. The cross should tower in our lives. And the cross is the way home. In fact, that's the fifth lesson that we learn. The cross is glorious because Jesus made it the gateway to heaven. It's remarkable how the symbol of cruel death became for us the symbol of eternal life. Indeed, the cross is the bridge that leads us to heaven. When I teach evangelism at the seminary, I teach my students to witness using the bridge illustration. And in the bridge illustration, I draw a chasm on a napkin or a piece of paper, and I draw this chasm. And on one side are sinful human beings. On the other side of the chasm is holy God, God the Father. Holy, holy, holy is He. Well, how can sinful people cross the chasm to have fellowship with a holy God? That's the question that we pose when we use that witnessing method. But in the bridge illustration, we draw the cross. And the cross bridges the chasm between sinful people and a holy God. And so the cross then becomes the bridge by which people can have fellowship with a holy God. So truly, the cross is the gateway. It's the bridge that enables us to have salvation and fellowship with God the Father. When the famous evangelist Dwight L. Moody lay dying, his family and friends gathered around his bedside. Thinking he had passed away, they began to leave the room. Just then, they heard Moody stir. Turning back toward the bed, they saw Moody's eyes open and his mind apparently clear. Someone began to pray, but Moody interrupted, Do not pray that I may live. I have seen Dwight and Irene, his two grandchildren who had died. I have seen the face of Jesus and I am satisfied. Earth is receding. Heaven is opening. God is calling me. This is my coronation day. Dwight L. Moody crossed the bridge by means of the bridge of the cross. Dwight L. Moody passed from lostness to eternal life in Jesus Christ. And so it is with all. If you're listening today and you've never placed your faith in Jesus Christ, I hope you will make the cross your bridge to salvation this very day. Just pray and say, Lord, I, I know that I'm a sinner, but I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. I believe that he rose again from the grave on the third day. And I pray that you will save me from my sins and give me eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes, the cross forms the bridge that leads us to heaven. As you take the Lord's Supper today, think of the words that Fanny Crosby wrote. Jesus, keep me near the cross, there a precious fountain. Free to all, a healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. Till my ransom soul shall find peace beyond the river. Amen. Amen. Truly, it's through the cross that we will find peace beyond the river. It's always a blessing to receive the Lord's Supper. And this is Lord's Supper Sunday at Central Baptist Church. We read about the first Lord's Supper in Matthew chapter 26, beginning with verse 
26. Let me read it for you. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So let me encourage you to take your little Lord's Supper kit and we'll receive the Lord's Supper at this time. The Bible said Jesus took the bread and broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to them. Then Jesus said, take, eat, this is my body. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks for it. And when Jesus had thanked the Lord for the cup, he shared it with his disciples. Let's thank the Lord for his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you poured out your precious blood on the cross of Calvary to wash away our sins. Lord, as we receive this juice this morning, may it remind us of your precious blood that was shed on Mount Calvary. And Lord, help us to be grateful for the great sacrifice that you made to purchase our salvation. Jesus gave the cup to his disciples and said, drink of this, all of you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had to worship online this morning. And we thank you for the opportunity to partake of the Lord's Supper. Truly, it's a time to remember and to reflect on the debt of grace that we all, that we owe the Lord Jesus. By his death on the cross, we have salvation. And by his death on the cross, we have hope for heaven. Oh, Jesus, keep us near the cross. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for joining us online today. We are so glad that you were a part of the service. If you have any questions about what it means to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, about baptism, or how to join our family at Central Baptist Church, we would love to answer your questions. You can use Facebook Messenger to send us a message, or you can call or email the church. You will find our phone and email information on our website. Thank you again for worshiping with us today, and may God bless you and give you peace.